In this video, I'm gonna show you how to wire this kitchen island. And if you're new to this channel, my name's Josh. Your channel's all about putting your own house, saving a ton of money. Be sure to subscribe, ring that bell so you get a notification every time I release a new video, and hammer that like button for me. That's all I ask in return for making this video. So the first thing I wanna do is go over some codes. So let's get started. Welcome to Kitchen Island Wiring 101. So the first thing I wanna go over is where the power source comes from for the receptacles in an island. Per code in my area, they can't be attached to a living room or anything of that nature. They must be connected to the kitchen circuit. So you must take a wire out of one of the outlets along the kitchen countertop and then run it right to your kitchen island. And it doesn't have to be out of the countertop, but most time your outlets are around the top of the kitchen countertop. So I took the wiring that's for this cabinet out of this outlet back here in the corner, and I actually made a video wiring this whole kitchen. And if you wanna check out the video, check out the card in top right hand corner of the screen. It shows me rough wiring this kitchen. So the next thing I wanna go over is the circuit in which the receptacles are hooked to for the island is 20 amp GFI. So you always wanna protect your kitchen outlets with a GFI breaker or a GFI outlet that it, when it first comes to will protect the whole kitchen outlets on that same circuit. So either one's fine in my area. So just keep that in mind. The third thing is the, the receptacle on the island can't be any farther than 12 inches below the countertop surface. When I go to cut a hole in the side of the cabinet where my island is, we gotta make sure we're not any lower than 12 inches to that outlet. The next code in my area is any island over two foot must have an outlet in it. So with that being said, it also needs an outlet within two foot of the edge. So if you have an island that is eight foot long, like I'm gonna be wiring in this video, I gotta have an outlet on each side of the island. So anything over two foot, which most islands are well over two foot, but also two foot from each end of the island. The final code that I wanna go over is the wiring must be protected either with MC cable conduit or something of that nature. So talk to your local inspector and see what you gotta protect your wiring with. And the reason why that is, is because when you take the drawers out of the island for whatever reason, the wiring that's gonna be in the back of the island is gonna be exposed at that time. So it needs to be protected. So if somebody reaches back there and is messing with a pot or pan, if there isn't drawers in the cabinet per se, it could cut into that wire. That's another reason why you want it protected. So definitely need to make sure we protect our wiring in the island. Okay, so enough with this type of stuff. Let's get to physically wiring this island. Before you start wiring your kitchen island, be sure to kick the breaker off to that circuit and verify that it's off. The items I'm gonna be using to wire this island is all right here. And what I'm gonna be using is a 3 8 Romex connector that's gonna to hook to this. And this is gonna act as a junction box. And then I got a double snap lock connector that's for this metal cladded wire. And if you take a look here, I got bushings that go on the end of the NC cable. And then we got 90 degree snap lock connectors that's gonna go in these single gang boxes that's gonna house the tamper resistant receptacle and it must be tamper resistant to meet code in my area. And then I got the outlet cover and this stuff can be found in my Amazon store. The link is in the description below. I'm gonna first begin by preparing this junction box. To accept the Romex wire and the Romex is down here coming up through the floor and that's 12-2 wire. And this is gonna come right through the bottom here. So I must first knock out this punch out and then install this Romex connector. So I'm just gonna give it a nice swift punch with my linemans. Then I'm gonna turn it around and grab a hold of it and then just bend it back and forth. I'm now gonna take the nut off the Romex connector, slide this up in it like so, and then tighten it down. And that's all there is to connecting that. And now I'm gonna go connect this to that wire. I'm gonna first begin by cutting this wire a little shorter. I'm now just gonna fish this 12-2 wire up through this Romex connector like so. And then before I go too far down, I gotta tighten up these screws. After I got these two Phillips screws tightened down on the Romex connector, I'm just gonna set it in place about where it's gonna go and then I'm gonna secure it to the side of this cabinet using these little half inch screws. I can't use anything too long because this is the back side of the cabinet. 
I'm now just going to take my utility knife and strip the casing off the wire. In order to strip the Romex, the easiest method that I found is to use the utility knife, but they also make a Romex stripping tool. But when you do use the utility knife, be sure to go over the jacket lightly so you do not puncture the conducting wires underneath the sheathing. I only need about six inches of wire and I got about a foot sticking out here. So I'm going to cut these off to about six inches. I'm now going to punch out this top knockout. I'm now going to take this dual snap lock connector and this is something you can push right in because it's snap lock unlike the Romex down here but either version of this is fine. Now this opens up and the MC cable is going to lay right in here so it's going to be easy to install it. So I'm going to go ahead and place it right into this I'm here on the end of the island and this island is 48 inches wide and if I'm setting over here I don't want to have to reach clear over here in order to plug something in so I'm going to put this outlet more towards the center of the whole island and not at the center of this base cabinet and in order to do so I'm just going to take a speed square right up to the edge and I'm going to come over about an inch so that's about where I want and I want to miss this board that's inside of this cabinet so an inch is really good for me. And I know I need to come over about two and a quarter inches. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a line two and a quarter. And the reason, if you want to know how I came up with that, if we take a look at our outlet box, if you set it up there, as you can see, by the time you compensate for this screw on the end, and it's going to have to be at least that wide in order to fit inside of an opening. So that's how I came up the two and a quarter. And the length, I'm going to show you here in just a minute, but I'm going to come down about three inches. So I'm going to scribe this line, and then I'm going to come over here at the two and a quarter mark. And when I say two and a quarter, that's of the width of the box, not from the edge. So I actually got to come over three and a quarter. I'm going to scribe down the side of the cabinet, so like so. And now I'm going to set my box up here, and I'm going to line it up right at the top of this line, and I'm going to mark the center of this screw hole. Now the center of this screw hole is going to be where our receptacle screw has to go through to clear. So we want to make sure we get that right. And I know down here distance wise, I need to come down about three and a quarter. So I'm going to go ahead and mark three and a quarter down here. So about right there. And now I'm going to square a line right over from that. And again, that's going to allow for our box and now I'm going to set this back up here and line it up with my top screw hole and keep it square in center of the lines we made. And now I'm going to mark the bottom hole here. So now I know I need to draw out these two holes with a quarter inch drill bit so I can clear the screws. And now I'm going to take a oscillating tool with the rounded blade at first in order to plunge into these marks I made and use a steady hand doing this. Now, if I was cutting into a wood grain cabinet, I'd make sure I taped this off, but this is just pressed particle board and I don't have to worry about it. If you do not have an oscillating tool, you can also make a plunge cut using a sawzall and then finishing off with a jigsaw in order to make the sharp corners. I'm now gonna remove this blade and get a straight blade in order to plunge into this deeper and straighter. As you have probably already noticed, I do not have the drawers in the cabinets. That's because I do not want to risk damaging the drawers while I'm cutting out for the outlet. I'm now just going to give a little tap with my hammer that it's cut all the way through. I'm now going to take my electrical box and I'm going to dry fit it to make sure it fits okay. And it looks like it fits really well. And now I'm just going to square it up into that hole we just cut and fasten it using these little half inch screws that I got. We don't want real long screws here in this cabinet because it's clearly not that thick. So half inch screws are fine. Now I'm just gonna secure it in the ears of this electrical outlet. I'm now gonna remove the knockout in the back of this electrical box. And I'm gonna install this snap lock connector in the back of it. And this is a 90 degree for this purpose, it works fine. This is the back side of the electrical box and this is the snap lock side to this. So all we gotta do is push it right into that electrical box. And sometimes if you rock it back and forth, that helps it go in a little easier. I'm now over here on the other side of the island and I'm gonna do the exact same thing we did on that side. The great news is after you did one, the second one is gonna go really easy because you just got warmed up. 
I'm now going to show you how to remove this cladding off this wire using this tool by Southwire called the Roto Split. It's really easy to use. The first thing, all we got to do is loosen this up so we can slide our cable right into it. Now I like to take off about a 12 inch strip here or so. So I'm just going to guesstimate about 12 inches and that's going to be plenty to remove. And now as you can see, it's laying right in this channel and I'm going to try to get this pin right between the groove here and then I'm going to tighten it down until the cable is secure. Now all we got to do is squeeze pressure and start turning this wheel at the same time like so and you're going to feel it cut through that wire and once you feel no resistance all we got to do is release pop the cable out and give it a good twist and then pull the sheathing right off and now i just got to remove this plastic using a utility knife and that's just a little protective sheathing there if you're wondering how that tool works it just cuts a little slice right into that jacket without damaging the wire and then when you twist it it just disconnects the cable sheathing from each other and then we're just going to take this red bushing and it's going to go right over the wire and then slide it right down into that sheathing. And as you can see, that bushing is protecting these sharp edges from hitting the wire. And now we're good to install this into the connector. I'm now going to come over to the first electrical box we installed. I'm going to open up the connector. And as you can see, there's a hole in the back of it that comes out of the box. So all I'm going to do is take the wire we just stripped and slide right into that connector and it's just going to fold right up like so then this just snaps shut and this metal piece will lock this cladded wire or cladded cable into place and that's all there is to hooking it into the box in order to get the mc cable into the junction box that is down here in the center cabinet i got to drill through these two cabinets here in the back using a 5h drill bit I'm going to go ahead and drill this one out as well because that goes to the other outlet so they're both going to meet in the middle and go down to that junction box and I know I got to stay about three inches back because that cabinet drawer comes to about right there so right under this little corner piece will be just fine. If you are not comfortable doing your own electrical work I highly recommend that you hire a professional. I now got the end of that cable and I'm going to fish it right through the holes I just drilled. As you have probably already noticed it's much easier to install this wiring while you have the countertops off but if they are on you just do the same method other than you're going to be working underneath the countertop. I'm now just going to mark the end of the cable where it goes into the junction box right here and then I'm going to guess made about a foot away and no I need to cut the metal cladding right here and right here so we know this piece needs to stay intact from here back but we need to strip it and cut it at this mark here so I'm going to go ahead and cut this part first and then as you can see now I can cut it right here using my lineman's and now I'm just going to take it and cut it right off and next, I need to go ahead and cut that mark and strip the sheathing off. Repeat the process. And again, we got to install our bushing. I'm going to run the cable to the other outlet. I will add that I have seen other methods for cutting the MC cable that is not going to require this tool, but I do know this tool is the easiest way to do it. I'm now going to attach this wire that has the green screw on it to the back of this metal box. This is going to bond this box to the grounding system, so it's important to do this step. So I'm going to put this right inside of this hole that's where this little bump out is. I'm now going to fish this wire down into this box and now I'm going to fish this wire and then I'm going to snap this shut and those are very secure right there. I'm now going to cut the rest of these wires about the same length as this green wire that I attached to the metal box. By code these wires need to be at least six inches longer than the box. I'm going to strip these wires using these wire strippers and these can be found in the links below as well. And since this is a 12 gauge wire I'm going to use this 12 that's located on the mouth of these strippers. You can use a utility knife instead of a stripping tool like this but this method just makes a cleaner cut. I'm now going to separate all of my black wires, white wires, and ground wires. If you don't have any MC cable on hand you can explore the other options such as conduit in order to protect your wiring. I'm now just going to use these Wago connectors and connect all these wires together and these are really easy to use. You simply just open up these latches and then slide your wires right into the ports. 
like so. There's really nothing to it, not very complicated at all. And clamp it down. So now that all my grounds are connected, I'm just gonna roll these up nice and neat, place them back into the box. And I'm now gonna hook all of my whites and blacks together using the same method in the Wago connector. If you do not have any Wago connectors on hand, you can also just use simple wire nuts. Those work great as well. Now we're just gonna squeeze those wires back in the back of that box nice and tight. I'm now just going to place the cover over the junction box and tighten down these screws and then we are done inside of this junction box. Cutting up this wiring job I'm just going to take these half inch wire staples and within six inches of this outlet I'm going to anchor this to the side of the cabinet like that and then down here. So that's what we're going to do to secure these wires. Staples are not the only way to fasten these cables. You can also use zip ties and various other things to do the same job. Now let's kick the breaker back on and see if it works. I'm now going to take my Klein outlet tester and plug it into the receptacle to see if it works. And this can also be found in the links below. But if you look here, the code that shows two lights on the end shows it is correctly wired. So we're good there. And there's a bunch of codes on these that lets you know if there's any issues. But as you can see we are good to go. If you need to know how I rough wired this whole kitchen, check out this video. It'll help you out.